Ready, sir? Mm-hmm. Good, sir? Yep. Oh, nope, no, hang on. So you've already read the note from the bottom of this slide. Back in October 1880, if you cast your mind back, you were probably all reading this in, um, this, this edition of Nature. And Dr. Henry Falls, a Scottish surgeon, um, wrote a letter to Nature about fingerprinting, sort of the uniqueness of fingerprints, how to record them in ink. Now, the first thing you're probably thinking, do you know the phrase, what's that got to do with the price of fish? What has it got to do with the price of fish? Indeed, what has it got to do with open repositories, what we're here for? What's it got to do with SWORD, which is sort of what we want to talk about? And what's it got to do with research data? So we'll come back to all that in a second and see where fingerprinting fits in. So for those of you that sort of want to recap of what SWORD is, SWORD is an interoperable um, protocol for depositing things into repositories. SWORD version 1 that was developed about five years ago was what's known as fire and forget. A bit like this lady posting a letter. You can post things, but once you've posted them, um, you can't interact with them in the future. They've gone, they're being delivered. SWORD version 2, on the other hand, is a little bit more like a notice board. You can put things in, but also then you can go and see what you've put in. You can interact with it. You can sort of update it. Um, you can take it out if you want to, and you can actually you know, do much richer interactions with them. So that's the difference between sword one and sword two. So we, we were asked sort of by the GIST to look into the applicability or the opportunities of using sword with research data. You know, how can we um, use sword as one of these um, sort of pieces of interoperability to help get all these different types of research data into repositories? So one of the first things we did is, well, we thought, you know, we really have to go around and look at research data, look at the processes that are used for them. And then we'll be able to come back, sort of apply those to SWORD and work out, you know, what are the opportunities, what are the answers um, that SWORD can provide or the, the facilities um, or what sort of might be the challenges there. So, as I said, the first thing we did was sort of go around and look at different um, research data deposit requirements, um, you know, try and classify them, try and describe them, um, describe these really as use cases that um, people would understand, you know, say, yep, yeah, that's how I do my research um, deposits. So we sort of came up with a little grid. Um, the first thing we did was, was define, well, what, what's the thing we're actually depositing? When we're talking about data, what is it? So we came up with three classifications for this. Data contents or, you know, actual stuff. Data descriptions, what's a better word, metadata about the data. And data collection descriptions, so thinking about a, a collection of that data. Secondly, the source, you know, where's it actually coming from? Is it, you know, sort of a file from your PC, uh, deposited from laboratory equipment, something like a CRIS system, coming from another repository, or even is it sort of research data coming from a publication management system? Next up then was the target. So you have your research data, you know where it's come from, where is it going to? You know, is it an institutional repository, institutional data repository, geographic repository, subject repository, publication related repository, things sort of dry out or something? A type-specific system, you know, that it only holds one type of research data. Um, unaffiliated data repositories, that's um, something like Figshare, maybe, or a staging system. And then finally, sort of, what, what might you do with that research data in the future? Is it sort of, you know, it's put there, that data's never going to change. Maybe it was an observation of the weather one day. Um, you don't touch it, or m might it be a model that's updated um, and you want to apply updates? So coming back to Dr. Forbes' paper and fingerprinting, we sort of thought, well, perhaps one way of doing this is to apply um, fingerprinting to these. So we can sort of look at our own um, research data deposit um, scenarios and actually apply a fingerprinting from that grid. So some examples of that, for example, might be if you're depositing data content from laboratory equipment into a subject repository and you're not going to do anything with it, that sort of fingerprint. So we were really wondering, you know, is this um, a useful mechanism for those of you that are working with research data? Are you able to express your uh, research data deposit use cases in that way? So a few examples, data share um, here at Edinburgh, that's, um, you know, actually deep, uh, working with data content, 
coming, you know, typically from PCs into an institutional data repository, and it's fine, and we don't tend to touch these things. And then there's a couple of other examples, sort of Dryad or the archive service. So then what happens if we actually bring sword into this mix? You know, does it create some big sticky mixture, or can we actually bake this and we'll get some nice chocolate cake? Um, so we were looking, you know, at the opportunities that provides, and are there going to be any issues with it? On the whole, it seems to actually deal with most of these use cases very well, um, although there's sort of one or two which may be issues, may not be, and it'd be good to hear your feedback later on where they are. So the first, obviously, is big files. What do we do with those? Um, obviously, web technologies aren't great at, you know, huge files. Um, Sword being a web technology suffers from those. What can we do about that? Um, deposit by reference being sort of one, one example. Another is, and a lot of these are edge cases, so it's really known whether these should be relevant or not. What happens if we're trying to deposit something and it's moved for some reason? So HTTP has ways of dealing with this, 303, it's gone somewhere else. Um, is that an issue that SOAR needs to think about? And another couple, what about streams, streams of data? SOAR very much, and most systems really deal with discrete blocks of data, of files. Do we need to deal with streams as they come in? What about collections? Sword is very much again orientated around single discrete items. Um, how you know does it need to think about collections in some way? This has now gone on past 20 seconds, I guess. Yeah. Let's move this one on manually. There we go. So, so the finally, you know, as we said, we're here just to talk about this and just to raise some of these issues. So it'd be good to hear what you think of SWORD and of research data deposit in general. Um, should we have presented like this, semi-naked, uh, shouting at you with sticks? <laughs> We're probably yeah, a bit of a scary thought, but we'll, we'll, we'll um, stick to SWORD instead. So thank you very much. These are the three people that are in this. Myself, Richard Jones at the front, and Pablo, who's about somewhere. We'd very much be happy to talk to you about SWORD in general and actually research data and, and its remit here um, and some attribution. So thank you very much. <laughs>